This and That Northwest. The Nisqually Wildlife Refuge, approximately eight square miles of estuary, where hundreds of fish species and wildlife pass through during their migrating journey. The main animals this is kind of set aside for are the waterfowl that are, are migrating through. Um, we have over a thousand cackling geese here right now, and they've all just been showing up in the last couple of weeks. Um, other waterfowl, ducks, other geese, this is an important stopover for a lot of them on their migration route, so we're the, we're the all-you-can-eat diner. <laughs> but there's mammals here as well. There are beaver and otters, and there's even some deer that run around on the refuge property. The little frogs are really popular with the kids, and the woolly bear caterpillars right now, this time of year, they're all over the place. I was actually shocked at how beautiful it is out here. It's all open, it's really, really nice. The fall foliage is great. It smells like the ocean too out there, I like that. It's got a little bit for everybody. Uh, if you like hiking, there's a nice long hike out the pier. You know, I think it turns into a five mile loop and if you just want to keep it short and simple, you just stay right here on the boardwalk. It's, it's pretty nice. It's really beautiful, like no matter what time of year you come, like there's always so much to see and it's just really nice. Even though today it's raining buckets, I mean, there's still such a nice scenery to look at. To complement the natural viewing of the refuge, the National Wildlife Service offers an education center at the front building. It's there where you can learn more through exhibits and books. The refuge gets its water from the Nisqually Glacier, which is part of Mount Rainier. The fresh water flows down the Nisqually River, joined by other rivers, till it reaches the salt water of the Puget Sound. It's where the freshwater rivers meet the salt water of the sea, and that mixing of, of fresh and salt water is incredibly important for a variety of wildlife. You can say we're quite fortunate to have this estuary, as many have been converted for economic use. About 90% of the world's estuaries are gone. People have developed them or dredged them or turned them into something that works for our needs, and so most of them we have changed. The Nisqually Delta was a natural estuary before the 20th century, but in 1904, Alson Brown, a Seattle lawyer, bought some of the land for farming. To protect his farm from floods by the Nisqually River, he built a dike, which in turn changed the natural ecosystem. Especially salmon. And the Chinook salmon in Puget Sound are endangered because uh, they don't have enough estuaries to grow up in. There's plenty of rivers for the spawning, there's plenty of ocean for the adults, but those critical years in the middle, there was nowhere for them to grow up. So it, it was, wasn't working for a lot of populations of salmon. Eventually, the land went through several owners until it was sold to the National Wildlife Service in 1974, and the Nisqually Refuge was formed. It wasn't until 2009, however, that the brown dike would be removed and the estuary would be restored to its natural state. When the dikes were removed to increase the estuary area where the tides can come in and out, uh, boardwalk trails were built so that people can walk out over these mud flats at some times and at other times you're walking out over Puget Sound. It's a neat area where you can get out over top of the water, look down and directly below you there's jellyfish, there's seals, um, there's even been whales seen within the refuge boundary. They did a really good job building the boardwalk. It's really solid and it seems to be shedding the water even from the rain, so it's great. Good had somebody in a wheelchair out there and no worries. It's great for strollers, great to bring the family. It's just like a walk downtown pretty much, you know, except uh, you've got nature all around you. It's a lot of fun. We just saw a deer <laughs> like on the other deer. side once. We saw herons and baffins 
and seagulls. So we had a comorant. That's right. So it was really, it was really nice. A couple songbirds, some black-tailed deer, a few Pacific tree frogs, beavers, eagles, an owl, kingfishers, gulls, geese. I've been seeing a lot more bald eagles, but we just see a lot of birds all the time. So, and it depends on what time of year. I think that would have to be seals. I saw some out uh, more in the tidal flat areas. They were sunning on the rocks, and I'd never seen that before, so that was a new experience for me. Caterpillars. We saw caterpillars. What else have you seen? Frogs. Frogs. What did you just find out there? A mushroom. So we saw a lot of cackling geese today, and these gorgeous little green tree frogs. Heron, a seal out in the water. Frogs, barn swallows, and a flock of herons, which was surprisingly large, and a bunch of cormorants at the end, and yellow, uh, common yellow throat, and a bunch of uh, cowbirds, and red and blackbirds, and uh, tree swallows. I saw a seal. Yeah, I was surprised, but it's an estuary out there, so it's salt water. It's still ongoing, it's not like it's done. Um, some of the, the restoration of the estuary took place in 2009, and it was became a refuge in 1974, so it's an ongoing battle to try to keep it as natural as possible, restore what we can, make, enhance it for wildlife and, and different habitats, and you're never done. There's always work to be done. I really appreciate that people preserve areas like this. People can enjoy it, and I think they really appreciate it. I know I do. So it's great to have it kind of in our own backyard. Mm -hmm.